We've been looking at how important it is to take control of our lives. God is in control of everything, but He has given you the responsibility, isn't that true, of taking control of your life. Let me speak to you this morning about the power of responsibility. But I want to remind you of something very powerful that we need to focus on because our world is becoming less and less responsible. So let me help you this morning, give you six things that I felt I was inspired by. In speaking about the power of responsibility, number one, God has created us for responsibility. You were created to be responsible. It's the first thing God did after he created the heavens and the earth is he gave us responsibility. It was his design. It wasn't an accident. It wasn't punishment. Notice in the book of Genesis, chapter two and verse 15, the Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. Won't you underline that? Work is not a punishment. Work is responsibility. Don't just show up. Serve up. Amen? But most of us treat work like it's a negative. I have to go. Yeah, my pl the place I work at, and you must see what they pay me. It's disgraceful. No, no, take responsibility and watch God give you more responsibility. You wouldn't be the person you are if you didn't have something to do. Isn't that true? And what they did was they, they took this responsibility, but guess what they did? Immediately they were irresponsible in their job. They didn't do what they were supposed to do. They took off the tree, and guess what? Trouble came. And when trouble came, guess what they did next? They blamed. Here's a thought. Adam and Eve were the happiest and freest they were when they took responsibility. The minute they re reneged on their responsibility, they became unhappy and they were in bondage. So God's created us to be responsible. And it's amazing. When you take responsibility for anything, for studying, for working, for, for your family, for your personal life, for anything, you, you know what happens to you? You suddenly start to improve in every area because you're focused and you're committed. Number two, irresponsibility has a powerful knock-on effect. When you don't take responsibility, it has an impact. In Joshua chapter seven, we read about a man called Achan. Achan went into the land and the Lord said, the first fruits belong to me. Don't take anything. The city of Jericho was the first city to fall. And as they went in, he kind of went down a back alley, took some gold and some stuff, and he hid it. That's like crime and fraud. It's being irresponsible, taking what's not yours. The Lord called Israel after they lost the battle, and the Lord said, Israel has sinned, not Achan has sinned. One person's irresponsibility affects a whole nation. But, but, it, but it wasn't me, I'm just the victim. No, no, don't, don't be victim. Start taking response, start teaching response. If everyone was responsible, South Africa wouldn't have problems. So we need to take responsibility because it has a knock-on effect. Responsibility removes unnecessary and pointless waiting. You can't wait for someone to change your life. Wait for someone to change your world, your family, your nation. You change it. If you're addicted, you make a decision. I'm gonna get myself sorted out and gonna lean on God. If I'm broke, I can't just wait. I gotta start changing things. Can you say amen? amen? And what are you waiting for? People say, I'm waiting for the Lord. No, he's waiting for you. Hmm? Take control of your life and build it on what Jesus said and the power of the Holy Spirit that's available to you already. You'll be amazed at what God can do. Number four, responsibility points at me, not at others. I read the wonderful story about this young grade 12 uh, learner. His name is Cyril McQuitty, lives in Limpopo. He didn't have the money for student fees. So instead of pointing at people, he looked at his father and his grandfather and they had made a mouthwash that was herbal. So he started producing this mouthwash. He sells a liter for 250 rand. Most people are buying from him up in Limpopo because they say it's better than the commercial products. Some people who've lost teeth have had other teeth strengthened and gum disease removed. He's making money and he's getting varsity fees. This is what he said. He says, I make and sell the product to raise money to pay registration fees at university. My parents are poor and I don't want my dream to die because of poverty. I come from a family of herbalists. The family's been using this product for many generations and we've never had teeth or gum problems. I turned a family secret into a profitable business. What an amazing South African entrepreneur who's not pointing or waiting or blaming. He found a way to win 
and took responsibility. What's in your world that you could do that you could take responsibility for? Number five, it's the overlooked key to success. People don't realize that responsibility is actually the key to success. The story of Joseph is classic. We don't have time to read it this morning, but the Bible says when he worked in Potiphar's house, listen to this, Potiphar didn't have to worry about anything because he left it in Joseph's hands. That's responsible. He didn't have to worry about his chariots, his food. He didn't even worry about his wife. Why? Because this guy is responsible. I can put him in a top role and not be worried. Because now he's unfairly dismissed, Joseph. He's treated badly. She lies about him. She's the one that comes onto him and says, he came onto me and he gets discriminated against. He gets unfairly dismissed. How many of you know that's a very popular thing in our world? And he finds himself in prison. In prison, he's not the victim. And in prison, he doesn't start blaming. And he doesn't write a book about how bad Pharaoh is and how bad the people out there are and how there's discrimination. Instead, he takes responsibility. And the Bible says that the warder, who doesn't usually trust anybody, gives everything to Joseph and doesn't worry about anything because Joseph is there. That's number six. As we come to a close, it writes the end of our story despite its beginning. You may not have been able to write the beginning of your story, but you certainly can write the end if you take responsibility. Life is unfair. It gives us all a bad start. It takes us on a journey that's unfair and things happen to us. We we think we're gonna get married and live the ideal life sometimes and have the ideal job, sickness, disease, all sorts of stuff, unfair practices, betrayal, disloyalty. All these things come in, but we've gotta take responsibility because sometimes we're foolish when we're young. Isn't that true? But we can change the course of our lives. I want to say to you today that if you take responsibility, you can write the end of your story, even though someone else wrote the beginning. 